Hi friends, it's Kristen Fagan here with Softlex Company, and we're here for a new episode of Free Spirit Beating on the Softlex Company Facebook page and YouTube channel. I'll be here in just a moment. Today, we're gonna to take a closer look at our new Pantone fall winter collection and make some earrings. Happy fall, y'all. <laughs> it's Kristen here. Nice to see you. Hi, Lydia and Tony. Thanks for being here right on time. I am still getting used to the earlier time of 1 p.m. Pacific. Um, didn't quite have enough time to get myself dolled up and have my lunch before I jumped on the video. <laughs> so that's gonna be uh, something I gotta get used to with a little bit, a little bit earlier. But luckily when the times change next month and in Arizona, we don't. I'll go back to my um, my original time, I think, right? Yeah. So <laughs> I should be back on track again. Hey, Jan. Hi, Maria. How's everyone doing today? I have some luscious colors on my palette today to play with. Thanks, Gloria. <laughs> Mariella. Hi, Mariella from Louisiana. Gloria says you look cute. Sometimes you just gotta like make it work, right? And a bandana, a little headband always helps. <laughs> Hi, Michelle. Um, yeah, so we launched a ton of new products last week. We have the new Pantone collection, which is based off on the um, Pantone colors for fall and winter. If you don't know who Pantone is, they are a company that puts out trends, color trends specifically, and it's used in um, home furnishing, in fashion, in accessories. Um, and we've been playing around here at Southflex Company for the last couple of years. I think we introduced our first collection in 2019 um, with checking out what's coming up for the season that Pantone has released, looking at what we carry in our Softlex beading wire and coming up with color trends that match what we have and, and, um, and what they are predicting are gonna be the hot colors for fall. <laughs> so, hi, Becky, Julie, thank you. Julie says, I love the artwork behind you. Thanks, Julie. That's all my paintings. I love to paint. I do that as a, um, hi a hobby, a side hustle. I'm a creativity coach. I um, share creative practices with um, people online and in person. You can come and join me over in the Discover Your Creative Magic Facebook group if you're ever interested in learning more about what I do in the realm of um, art and creativity and specifically painting. Oh, Julie paints as well as making jewelry. Fantastic. Yeah, it's such, um, you know, most creatives, right? We do a lot of different hobbies and different things. And for me, painting and jewelry have been like the two mainstays, the two staples that have always kind of really helped fuel me. And sometimes I get to combine them and that's always fun. I don't do enough of that. So maybe um something to think about. How do I combine them a little bit more, right? <laughs> I've done some resin stuff where I've used paintings in jewelry or I've painted on jewelry, um, but it's never kind of st stuck around for the long haul. I do kind of keep them a little more separate. But thanks. Thanks for uh, 
commenting and checking out some of my work behind me. It's an ever changing gallery because as things change and move and go to different places or I make new art, I just kind of switch it around. And so that's always fun to have a new uh, a new look going on in the background. I'm starting to transition to fall. I have a couple of fall colors on this side, but I still have some real summery things over here. <laughs> Sorry, I'm backwards here. <laughs> um, so yeah, so we're gonna look at our Pantone fall colors. We also have some new craft wire. So I wanted to point that out because I don't think I shared that in the last video. And then we're gonna make some fun earrings. Um, let me go ahead and give you a little sneak peek of what's going on over here. I know that Sarah posted a question last week in the VIB group, which is the Softlex Facebook group called the Softlex VIB Studio. And she asked which of the four are your favorite colors. So this is the quad that we put together with the four colors of Softlex beading wire. And then these are the bead mixes we got. This first one is the Adobe soybean, the, I think it's called Fire Whirl and Rhodonite. And then we did bring in two bead strands in the soybean color and the rhodonite color. So out of the four, which are your favorite? Or do you not have a favorite? We even put together a bundle where you can get the quad and all four um, bead mixes for a bit of a discount. So if you like all of them, you can do that. Let me just put this on full blast here. And I know for me, the Adobe, which is this one right here, is the first one that has my heart. So that's why I decided to play with that particular mix and show you two earring designs with the Adobe bead mix. And then maybe in the future, we'll do a bunch of stuff. Well, I'm sure in the future, we'll do a bunch of stuff with the other mixes because we'll have these um, around for a little while. They are exclusive to us at softlexcompany.com. They are designed for, um, for us from our friends over at Jesse James Beads. And once they are sold out, we won't be getting another uh, shipment of stock in but it's just always really fun to have a fresh new palette of colors to play with. Lydia says she bought the bundle because she just couldn't choose. Yeah, I don't blame you. And as we move into the winter part of the, of the um, season, you know, I really feel like I'm kind of drawn here in these two Adobe and soybean for fall. And then it sort of transitions to more wintry for me. So that's uh, that's how I'm thinking about it. <laughs> All right, so one thing I wanted to mention is we do have some new craft wire in 16 gauge. Now we've never carried 16 gauge before. We've always gone up to 18. So 16 is gonna be thicker and heavier and it's gonna be really nice for creating um, more maybe shapes like if, thinking about ornaments and things like that, or if you need um, just a heavier duty um, structure for a piece you're working on, and then you use a thinner wire on the inside, that's when this comes in handy. I've been wanting Softlex to carry a heavier gauge for a long time, and we finally got some in in the non-tarnished gold, in the non-tarnished copper, and the non-tarnished silver. So these are a copper um, based product. So underneath it, uh, it is copper and then it is has like a special, um, I think it's enamel coating on there and then it has 
the color. But I know if you look at the description on our website, if you actually go into the product and look at the description, it's more um, complete there. I haven't looked at it in a while, so <laughs> don't take my word for it of the construction. But I do know that they are not totally, um, it's not totally gold and totally silver. So there is a copper center core. So just be aware of that. We've got it in 16 gauge. And I'm very excited that we have this product and I hope that you will um, enjoy using it in that heavier, thicker gauge as well. I know Sarah and I both have some projects planned um, as we get closer to the Great Beat Extravaganza with using that craft wire. So stay tuned for that. Becky says, I love rhodonite stones, so I love the rhodonite wire. Awesome. Yeah, you know, the rhodonite color, um, that name kind of threw me off with Pantone because when I think of rhodonite, I think of pink. And I that's maybe the more common color. Um, maybe there is a blue rhodonite and I just wasn't aware of it. So that totally threw me, threw me off personally a little bit because I think of pink but this is a gorgeous, gorgeous blue. Michelle is asking, are the wires medium, fine, or very fine? Um, for the Softlex beading wire in the quad, they are all medium diameter. So Softlex comes in very fine, fine, medium, and heavy. However, we carry the most colorways in the medium, and we tend to use um, the medium for our quads and our trios most of the time. Occasionally we'll throw another one in there, but that's generally what you'll get. Um, last thing I wanted to mention before I get started is the trick or treat jewelry making party is this Thursday. I'm going on on Thursday and Sarah's going on on Friday night. We'll be over on the Jesse James Beads page and then we'll share that to the Softlex Company Facebook page. Um, so we'll be on the Jeffy, Jesse James Beads Facebook page. It starts at 4 p.m. Pacific time, um, both nights. And then there's an after party on Friday. So I just wanted to remind you all about that. And we have two kits, two of the trick or treat kits left. You will likely not get them in time for the Thursday show at this point. However, they will be available for replay on the Jesse James Beads Facebook page. So um, if you wanna grab a kit but, and watch us live, but then maybe design with the kit later, you can totally do that. I think there's two kits left. All right, so let's take a closer look at some of these. First, let me go through um, what's in the quad. So this is Softlex beading wire in medium diameter, which is 0.019. It's our all-purpose diameter, and it comes in the dark blue lapis, the red coral, the butterscotch imperial topaz, and bone colors. And you'll get 10 feet of each, so 10, 10, 10, 10, making the entire quad 40 feet total of Softlex beading wire. And I'm holding these up in the larger spool size. So just so you're aware, this is um, the 10 foot spools are a bit smaller than this, but this is what I have in my stash are the larger sizes. So just wanted to be clear about that. And then we've got this great soybean color bead strand. So if you like working with some larger beads or just like having a few larger beads to mix in, the bead strands are great for that. This strand has two lovely roses and we've done some rose ring designs with craft wire in the past that are a lot of fun to make. So if you like making those or want to make a rose ring this is a great strand to pick up really pretty um classic and i also use these kind of strands to make ornaments we make a lot of icicle ornaments as we get closer to the holidays so if you think you'd like this kind of color for an ornament grab that too and then here is the rhodonite the rhodonite has a ton of sparkle. It's got this really beautiful flashy blue. 
And then this one is a little more of like um, a gray with some blue highlights in there. And this one, look at that. Oh, I just realized I didn't even have my, I don't even have my light on and that's sparkling like that. Let's see how that looks with the light. Really pretty. This one's lovely. I feel like this is kind of a newer cut. That really picks up those deep blues. And then you've got some fun silver components on this strand and you've got some gold components on the soybean strand. Now let's take a look at some of the fun beads in the mixes before we get going. I wanna just kind of pick through and see, highlight some pretties. Let's see if we can catch that, there we go. This one's almost like a midnight blue color. It's so dark and it's got a ton of sparkle. So these are in the Rhodonite Pantone bead mix. This is a fun little boho bead. You've got these large, awesome hearts in a silver tone and they have a decent weight to them. They're not like flimsy feeling. Oh, thanks for reminding us, Janelda. Yes, Kay is having her takeover today over at the Great Beat Extravaganza. I love making rose rings too. So Janelda says, I love making rose rings. Sorry I'm late, I had to watch Kay's takeover first. So our friend Kay Goss of Star Beads, she is taking over the Great Beat Extravaganza Facebook group today. Um, so be sure to go over there and see what she's got going on. I'm sure she's got a lot of fun stuff. Um, every presenter is having one day that they take over the group. And what that means is they'll just post whatever they want to videos, tutorials, giveaways, sales, all sorts of stuff. Um, and today is Kay at Star Beads. So be sure to check her out at some point today. And a lot of stuff is just, you know, if, they, if they're having a sale or something, it might just be the flash sale just for today. So you wanna make sure to get over there. These are pretty. So Rhodonite has a lot of silver components. Oh, I love these swirls. And different shades of blues from like a teal, a deep teal like this one here. This one matches our dark blue lapis wire color perfectly, like right to a T. Some pearls, teardrops. These little squares. and lots of different sizes. All right, so that is a little sample of what's going on in the blue mix. Now let's see what's happening in the fire whirl. So you've got these great big, adorable tassels. I always think these look like little skirts and I feel like in the red, it really has like that cha-cha feel. So <laughs> those are really fun. Oh, you've got two red roses in here too. So you can make a rose ring with the fire whirl bead mix. These are great little treasures. Hi, Julie. Did you just pop over? Were you over on the Great Beat Extravaganza as well? Did you see Kay's takeover day? these little baubles that have the little stars in them in red. Lots of silver components in the fire whirl as well. So things like that. And just this little simple coin. 
good mix of matte beads with shiny beads. And then this one's a little, has like a tint of some orange in there. So you've got some bright red, some true red, and some little orangey kind of colors in that mix. Julie says, yep, she watched Kay, super fun. I bet, Kay's always super fun. I'll have to go check her out <laughs> after, after I was just telling everybody, uh, Janelda shared with us that she was watching Kay at Star Beads. And so I was reminding everyone to go, go hop over there in the Great Beat Extravaganza. Okay, so next up is the soybean mix. And this one is really, um, yeah, it's got like a vintage vibe to it and some really pretty creams. These are one of the larger beads that's in that mix. So it's kind of got like an Art Nouveau kind of look to me. These are really pretty. They almost, they look like a seashell. Let's not lose that one. So this one has some clears, some creams. This is such a pretty color. I always really like this color. Rondelle shape. These are very interesting. Some fancy drops. These are kind of like a champagne color. So it would be great with bone if you wanted something that was sort of, that's the color that we use. So if you wanted something to match or you can use any of the other colors to kind of pop with it. Oh, Rosalinda just came over from Kay's Live also. <laughs> Fantastic. Oh, I'm sure she did such a good job. She's so much fun, Kay. She's so sweet. And then here is the Adobe mix. This is the browns and the copper at the end here. And that's the one I'm gonna use today. So there's some fun things in this Adobe mix. This one is like a little poof. And I just, I, I didn't use this one in my earrings, but this is super neat. I feel like this has got such like a 70s disco vibe. And then you've got these really sparkly berries, or I'm calling them berries. And then you've got a few different tones of browns and golden colors. Really great for fall. Some of these little brown, some wood beads are in here. And then these I think are really pretty. These have some weight to them too. These aren't sup like super light. These have a nice weight to them. So you get two of those. You also get two of these. So pretty. And then I love these. Little, they look like little basket weave beads in the copper. Such a pretty mix. And then of course, a cute, um, two cute little brown tassels. And then a few other like these little rounds in here that we'll be using. So, okay, so those are the all four mixes that are just new and available. And that's the quad that you can get. And so today I'm gonna be using the bone the Softflex Medium Bone Wire. And we're gonna make two pairs of earrings from that Adobe Mix. So these are the two that I've got here. One is a very simple teardrop shape with the tassel. And then this one, I was gonna do just a hoop. And at the last minute, I thought I was kind of pulling my wires in. And this reminded me of those kind of swing like a swing earring where people do with craft wire a lot of the time where they've got it linked on both sides. And, um, and I thought, Oh, I've never tried that with just the soft flex. And so that is just a new, a new shape to share. Yep. 
Yeah, that, that sounds good, Becky. Becky says, some of the browns would probably look good with some of the reds and would match my hair brown with red hair light, with red highlights. Perfect. Yeah, I love, I mean, they all mix really well because I love brown and cream together. The brown and the red would be a nice fiery pop. And then browns and blues are super pretty together also. So I'm just going to cut myself using a pair of flush cutters, um, a nice size piece of soft flex. This is about, well, I'll measure it, but I'm guesstimating it's about eight inches. Yeah, just about eight inches, a little bit, little bit longer. The two tools I have here are my magical crimping pliers and my cutters. I'm also using um, two different ear wires. I've got a gold ear wire and a copper ear wire. Just changing it up a little bit. And then for this one, I use the, the gold crimp tubes. And then for this one, I use the copper crimp tubes. Hi, Gail from Nebraska. Welcome. So these crimp tubes are two by two millimeter. Soft flex crimp tubes. They are extremely good quality, strong, thick, double the thickness of most on the market, and seamless, which makes a very big difference. So now I'm going to take out what I need for this earring. So I've got the tassel in the center. I need two wood beads for each earring. Two of the basket weave beads. Two of these cream little rounds. I need three he she's, but one there, one on each side, and then these brown little rounds, and then I need one more he she that's going to go in the center, and this last brown one is going to go up at the top. So that's my my pattern and I'm going to start with my tassel. I'm just going to take my tassel, string that right on the soft flex beading wire and then I'm just going to string down on each side my beads. So working up from the center I was just having a little pumpkin butter snack before I went live and I was thinking, um, asking you, are you team pumpkin? <laughs> Do you love pumpkin season and pumpkin spice or are you over it? <laughs> I know now it is everywhere. I'm definitely team pumpkin. Um, but even I sometimes feel like it is just ridiculously overkill and everywhere. <laughs> but that said, I picked up some pumpkin butter from Trader Joe's and I have not been disappointed. I had some pita and hummus and pita and pumpkin butter because a little savory, a little sweet, right? I cut eight inches. Pamage is asking, how much wire did you cut for the earring with the tassel? Yeah, I cut eight inches. I'll have way too much, but I like to <laughs> make sure um, that I have a lot when I'm doing a video. It's a little bit easier. So we got one not crazy about pumpkin spice and one heck yes, I love pumpkin everything. <laughs> 
I know. I think I feel like now, though, there's so many options that I sometimes can get like, no, this one just doesn't work. <laughs> but my favorites are pumpkin, um, pumpkin lattes, of course, and pumpkin bread and pumpkin chili. Those are my staples. So I went on each side of the tassel and then I took both wires and strung them up through the hishi to make my little teardrop shape. So next I'm going to string on this brown bead at the top here. And a lot of times I don't do this. A lot of times I just put the crimp here and make the loop and leave the crimp at the top. Um, but I decided today I wanted to just add a little bit more of a bead at the top instead of going right to the crimp. So a lot of times I'll have that crimp right here and then have the loop above it. But in this case, I wanted to gather the beads together, put them through one more bead and then do my crimp. Just changing it up slightly. I like the pumpkin chili so much. I make that all year round. I don't just uh, do it for pumpkin season. That one's one of my favorites. It doesn't have as much of all the spices though, like a pumpkin spice item would have when you make the chili. So I went on uh, two strands up my crimp tube and then one strand back down. And I'm just gonna hold it up to my first pair and check the loop. Looks like my loop on my first pair is just a smidge smaller. Rosalinda never heard of pumpkin chili. Yeah, it's good. It's really just like regular chili, except you add a can of pumpkin to it and it makes it really creamy. So it like thickens it up and makes it creamy and it has just a slight pumpkin taste. I wouldn't say that, um, I think if people are not into pumpkin that much, they probably wouldn't even notice. But really it makes it creamy and like thickens it. So now I'm gonna go ahead and crimp my crimp tube. So I'm using my magical crimping pliers I've got my crimp right in the center and I kind of feel it in there. Give it a nice squeeze, like a good handshake and it will pinch all four corners just like so. You want all the little four corners to have that pinchy. And then turn your, your design or your tool 90 degrees so that you're placing the crimp back in 90 degrees from where you had it the first time, right in the center again, and give it a squeeze. And then I'm just gonna squeeze it a few more times around. Ravioli time. Oh, speaking of, I do like pumpkin raviolis too. <laughs> Pumpkin raviolis are good. <laughs> yeah, Gail says it does not taste pumpkiny at all. It is delicious. It is. It's definitely if you not you don't really like um, that pumpkin flavor. And obviously, if you do like pumpkin flavor, it's fine too. But it really just kind of gives it like a creamy, creamy, thicky consistency that is just heavenly. Oh, let me just trim this a little bit closer. This little one, this little bugger's hugging. This one's hanging on by a by a, a steel thread. So those of you that are new to Softlex beading wire, it does have a stainless steel core. 49 strands that are micro braided and covered with a color and nylon. 
keep it real nice quality. Your colors never flake off. Super flexible beading wire and strong. So now I'm going to grab a hold of my ear wire and just give it a little twist to the side to open it up and slide it in. If you made your loop a little too small, sometimes that happens and you have a little you can always go around the back way. I just don't have the habit of doing that, but I think Sarah does that a lot. She goes around the back way. I tend to just go around the front. And place your earring on and then wiggle it back closed. And there's our first earring. Super fun little dangle, perfect for fall using the Adobe Mix. And that used the gold two by two, gold filled, I should say, two by two crimp tubes. And the next one, we're gonna use the copper. And hopefully I can remember how I made this shape. I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. So I'm going to cut about another eight inches again. Just so you have an idea, I cut eight inches off that first tassel and these are the end pieces. So as you can see, I definitely had way more than I needed, but so you can get away with a little bit less. All right, so for this design, we've got this bead in the center. We've got these on the side, which I don't think I showed you these, but these kind of have a tiger's eye look to them. By cone. And then these two bead caps. Hi, Leanne, glad you made it. Thanks for joining me. And then two of these little brown beads. And for the little center, I used the basket weave bead again. And then I used one of one of these brown little beads and one of the cream. I did one in one because originally I must have lost one of these. I think I dropped it and I didn't have it. So I decided I would do, instead of making them symmetrical, just do one in one. And I think I'll do the opposite on this one. But I did end up finding the other bead that I lost, of course, after I decided to do that. But I think it worked out cute. So I'm going to leave it. Now I'm going to go ahead and string with these beads that have some openings in the center. You just got to make sure you get through the hole on both sides because you can easily kind of come out <laughs> one of the other spaces. Leanne is asking, does this come from a kit? If so, which one? Um, this is from the Adobe Bead Mix the Pantone Adobe Bean Mix, and then I'm using the Pantone um, quad beading wire. So I'm using the bone color from the quad beading wire, and I'm using the Adobe Bead Mix from the four new bead mixes that we introduced. You could buy a bundle if you want to get the whole kit and caboodle of all four colors and all four mixes and wires, or you can buy them individually. Thanks for sharing the collections. Damien with Softlex just shared a link to the 2021 fall winter collection and you can find all of the beads there. So I'm using the Adobe one in these two designs today. Labeth, you get them at softlexcompany.com and you can find them um, all in the 2021 fall winter collection as well as just right on the homepage 
we always post our newest products right on the home page. So right now that's where you can find them. So I'm gonna start with the center again, and I'm gonna place um, that large copper bead right in the center of my beading wire. And again, this is about eight inches of the Softflex uh, medium bone color. And then I'm gonna string on each side. So I've got these tiger's eye looking by cones. You're welcome. Oh, good for you, Gail. I'm glad you make it and hope you're feeling all right. That's good to hear. Next, we're gonna string on the bead caps. And then we're gonna do these brown beads. So if you look here, that's the last of it for the first hoop. And then I've got a crimp there and a crimp there. So next is going to be adding a two by two millimeter copper crimp on each side. Yeah, Becky says, I love that big metal bead. I do too. It's really pretty. So now we've got a crimp on each side. Oh, and gotta be careful you don't lose your crimp. One of my crimps went right into the center of this one. <laughs> so let's, let's pull that back out. Okay, so now that we've got two crimps, I'm gonna take one end. So I'll take the right side and I'm gonna feed that into the left side. And then on this one, I'm going to string on those beads first, and then I will string down the other side. So right now I've got this wire going through that crimp. The right side's going through the crimp on the left side. So next thing I'm going to do is string on these three beads. that I want right in the little center here. And then I'm gonna take this one and string it down on the other side. And you can do those in opposite order. It doesn't really matter because now we're just gonna have to kind of play and make our shape. So this is, we want the beads to be on the bottom and the wire to be on the top. So I'm going to pull this wire up higher above it. And this is why this design in particular, you do want to have quite a bit of extra wire because The more wire you have to play with as you're pulling these in the different direction, the less likely you'll lose a little piece while you're making adjustments. Okay, so you see I still have the crimp right there and the crimp right there. And I pulled the Softflex one wire up above and I tightened the wire that has the beads on it and now I just got to look at the shape and size that I have on my first one. So it looks to me like I'm pretty close, surprisingly. Yeah, I think I'm pretty close on the size there. So I can go ahead and crimp. But this is when you would just kind of make sure that your loop here and your loop here are close. I might just make it just a smidge bigger. Oh, 
Okay, so making it bigger makes it kind of taller. I don't think I wanted that. So let's go back down. All right. So once I'm happy with it, I'm going to go in here and grab a hold of the crimp on one side, get it right in the center of my crimping pliers, give it a good squeeze, turn it on its side, and do that again. Hi, Catherine and Sue. Thanks for joining me. We are just making some earrings with the Pantone Adobe bead mix and the new wire colors from the Pantone wire collection. There we go. I think I just needed to like loosen that up just a smidge on this side. I think I had my beads pulled just a little too tight. Got to be able to get the crimp plier in there. Go around and around. And then once I'm done crimping, just take your flush cutters with the flat side right up towards your crimp and trim off your wire. And now we're gonna attach our ear wire to this little loop at the top. So because I used copper crimps on this one, I'm gonna go with a copper ear wire. Lizbeth says, those turned out really cute. I'm not really a hoop person, but I really like those. Thanks. Yeah, I was originally just gonna do a straight hoop and then it kind of started to happen on its own when I was pulling my wires down. Cause a lot of times I do a hoop with the two crimps on either side. And then I just put the ear wire in the center. But as I was doing it, I said, oh, this shape reminds me of how I see a lot of swing earrings with the craft wire in that kind of a shape. And then I thought, well, why don't I put some beads in the middle? And that is how this new to me little shape came about. Super cute. They're like a hoop, but they have a little extra flair. <laughs> little something different. And that's what's really fun about using the Softflex colored wire is you can change it up based on the beads you're using and use either a color that coordinates and kind of fades away or a color that really um, stands out and adds to it with the contrast. So you can go either way. My original intent today was to make a pair of earrings using all of the colors, but I really just fell in love with this Adobe mix and was just like all in on it today. <laughs> so, <laughs> Oh, I'm so glad you guys like it. Gail says, love these. I love this design. And Lynn says, very rich looking. Oh, Sue's got the bundle. It's on the way. Fantastic. So you will have all of the things you need to make these earrings and then a whole lot more. So fun. I know that um, I'm sure Sarah is going to be working with it this week as well. Let's put each in and see how they how they fare on. So there's our little hoop. And there's our dangle tassels. Very cute. 
I love them both. And I know I would wear these all the time because these are totally my colors. <laughs> so happy fall, everyone. Um, I'm hoping that you really enjoy the new collection we put together for you and make yourself some fun new pairs of earrings. I'll say these are a little bit, he no, not that one, this one. It's a little bit heavier because it's got the two um, metal beads in there. It's got the big one at the bottom and then also the little basket weave one in the middle up here. Um, so if you wanted to make them a little lighter, I would just swap those out for something a little bit lighter. But it's just a nice weighty earring that I totally dig. So great to see everyone. Happy fall. Enjoy your pumpkin if you're if you're one that likes pumpkin. <laughs> and I'm sure there's so many different types now. If you have a favorite pumpkin item that you enjoy, let me know because I do love pumpkin, but it is overwhelming out there these days. There's so much. <laughs> there's so much of it. I picked up some pumpkin cookies the other day and they were kind of a miss for me. Some of my family members liked them, but that was kind of a miss. So if you have something that you love um, that's pumpkin-y for this season, let me know. Thank you. Yeah, you missed the beginning, right, Catherine? So you can watch the replay right after I'm done. It should post shortly after. So many, so many fall winter outfits. Oh, you're very welcome, Labeth. All right, bye everybody.